Tell my wife! Tell my wife! Tell her I was fucking her sister! Watchdogs. Watchdogs. Nintendogs. Sleeping dogs. Watchdogs. Funny enough, there isn't a single moment in this game where you're tasked with dog sitting. Our dog watchers for today are Aiden Pierce and Damien Brinks, who are in the lobby of the Merlot Hotel in Chicago, hacking everyone's banking information. Something goes terribly wrong, and they can't break through the firewall for whatever reason, and you see that illustration right there of a woman? Memorize it, because it might be important for the story. The following day, Aiden is driving downtown Chicago, and he becomes the target of a drive-by shooting, resulting in the tragic death of his niece. The intro cutscene to the game ends, and it shows our character 11 11 months later, interrogating the man who killed his niece in the Chicago Cubs locker room. We asked the assailant who asked him to put a hit on us, to which the man named Maurice tells us that he has no clue who their name is. So we knock him out and make our escape through the baseball stadium, and for good measure we black out the whole Chicago Cubs stadium and escape. I'd like to see that one kid from American Pie throw a fastball now. As we're in our disgusting motel, Bad Boy 17, who's a member of our faction called DeadSec, which is basically the anonymous equivalent of the Watchdog universe, and their goal is to expose widespread corruption with hacking. Our accomplice, Bad Boy 17 wants to meet with us in public, and it's just funny watching the cutscene of Aiden walking around Chicago, asking a bunch of random people if they're Bad Boy 17 and then looking at him as if he's a weirdo. And turns out, it's a girl named Clara, and the first thing our character says is, You don't look 17. You don't look 17. She wanted to meet with him because she tells him that a gang member that was with Maurice the night of the Chicago baseball stadium survived her counterattack and he's getting incarcerated by the police. And apparently he's a huge snitch that might expose Aiden's identity to anyone who wants it in prison. Aiden goes to the correctional institution and intentionally goes in with a gun which gives him an automatic prison sentence. Hey, now that we're inside the can, we sneak into the prison, take out all the guards, and it ends up in a bloody mess. We finally meet up with the inmate, and we threaten the gang member with an extended sentence if he reveals our identity with anyone in the prison. So you're in here for... 60 days. What does that say? 60 years? What are you doing, man? I'm just showing you an alternate future. We escape the prison on the rooftop, but not without a fight, and we flee the scene by taking the metro. And just as we're enjoying the L train, remember Damien Branks from the intro during the Merlot hotel scene? Well, we haven't spoken to him since that day, and he calls us asking to meet up in person because he says that there's a third hacker, and he has important information about that heist to help us figure out who put a hit on us. We get to the meeting place, and Damien hacks the display ads, and we see him at our sister's house. Damon tells us that he kidnapped her sister and he blackmails us to retrieve the hard drive that will lead us to knowing who's the third hacker. We get back to her motel and try to trace the IP address of the third hacker, but we get ambushed by a small militia and we purposefully blow up our base of operations to remove any type of evidence. And just like a horizontally challenged man at a buffet, I clean that place good. <laughs> Now having lost all of our progress in trying to find this third hacker, we meet up with Clara in front of an island in the middle of the map and she says that we could use that island for our base of operations. So we do a bunch of parkour puzzles around the area, restore the power, and oh, how convenient, this island has a bunch of illegal tech that Claire and I can use to continue our mission. And after doing a little bit of research, we get a promising lead and get a signal in a horrible Section 8 building. When looking through the live cameras, we identify a man named Iraq. And yes, just like the country and also just like the slang term used for, you know, Chirac, which is kind of funny. Clara tells us that she can use a copy from his chip if we get close to him. We find out that Iraq is going to host an illegal auction for female sex trafficking slaves, which to be honest, this part of the game is pretty graphic. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what I want to show you guys. It's pretty, uh, it's, it's a bit heavy. But basically we bump into him and Clara gets to hack a copy of his chip because we're right next to him. Once we have the chip, we go into the Section 8 building and shoot our way through the old block condominium complex. And then we get to the top floor, we use the RFID chip and download the files in the server room. 
As we're trying to escape with all the information that we downloaded, we bump into Iraq and he reveals to us that he was the third hacker. And then we get into a weird boss fight with him on the rooftop of the building. And just like the ending of GTA Vice City, this was the last dance for Lance Vance. He shot me. <laughs> You shot me pretty good. Okay, well now, I mean, the game's done, right? Because now we can just hand over the files to Damien, and he can release our sister, and we can finish the game, right? Unfortunately, no, because Clara takes a look at all the data in the hard drive, and it's all encrypted, and she doesn't know how to decrypt it. She tells us that we could get in touch with the guy who created the code in the first place, and his name is Raymond Kennedy. But this guy's last ping was a couple years ago in the small fishing town of Pawnee. But that's fine, so we make our way to the little small village of Pawnee, and we visit the local bar asking a bunch of people if they've heard of Kennedy. And one guy invites me to a drinking minigame, going shot for shot to see who can black out first. And when he says his name, he just goes ahead and beats us and says, yeah, you've been looking at the person that you're looking for. And we end up telling our story, and he says that he's going to help us if I can do a simple task of killing a militia that's after him. You see, Kennedy worked for a company that created the code that's encrypted, and he knew how powerful the code could be. And he wanted the company that he worked for to stop using the code that he created for the company. So he obviously got fired and became a whistleblower, and we all know what happens to whistleblowers. So after spending a couple hours wiping out the whole militia that his old company hired to kill him, he calls us to thank us, and he's on board with us decrypting Iraq's data. So we bring him back to the island, we let him meet Clara, and just as he's trying to reinstate the data, we get hacked by a DJ named Default, and he steals all of our data from the hard drive. Well, it just so happens that this wannabe dead mouse guy has a big set playing downtown Chicago. Also, a big mechanic throughout the game is that we can use our phone to know people's names, their income, their personality traits, which some are funny, some are weird, and some are downright sad. And as we're walking through the club, Default did something where all the NPCs are making fun of us. So we go full hacker mode and hack the club's mainframe. And call me Karen the way I shut down the whole party. Deadmau5 takes off into his car and we go ahead and chase him. But it's not too difficult to find him just because his whole car is decked out with those streamer leaf LEDs thingies that make him super easy to spot. Once we collected the data from him, we ram into him and then we gun him down with an ACR. Finally, Kennedy helps us find the location of our sister. Oh, and call me the landscaper, the way I be mowing down all my enemies. Once we killed off all the guards that were keeping her captive, I lead her to my car, but she just yoinks my car and drives off without saying thank you or goodbye, which is weird. After that, we get a call from Kennedy, and he asks us to meet at the base because it's important. He tells us that the information that got decrypted from the hard drive is a bunch of blackmail and secrets from anyone and everyone. And this was the cutscene where everything clicked for me. Just because in a world where you can get a direct deposit from a stranger with one push of a button and spawn infinite funds, of course the next valuable thing after that is going to be secret information that you can use to blackmail people in power. And do you remember at the beginning of the video where I told you that there was a mysterious figure and to maybe look at it and memorize it? Well, it turns out that it's a woman named Rose Washington. And for some reason, there's a video recording of her getting beaten to death by the mayor of Chicago. Kennedy tells us that there's an old boomer named Quinn who's the biggest mob boss in Chicago. Which is kind of weird because we meet him a couple of times in the game when we're doing a bunch of side missions. And it just so happens that he owns the Merlot Hotel that we tried to heist at the beginning of the game. So you can kind of see where we're getting at. Quinn used the video as black blackmail to control the city of Chicago, and Iraq, the third hacker that was working with Quinn, thought that we had access to the full video during the heist. But we didn't, we didn't, we, we just had access to like a little blurp. So the mob boss, Quinn, that owns the hotel, he's the one that ordered a hit on us which killed our niece. So we go back to where everything started, and I'm coming out with vengeance and shoot all the guards. Now face to face with Mr. Quinn, who barricaded himself in a bulletproof room, we hack his pacemaker, which I had no clue what it is, but that's what it looks like. And he dies, which is a very uneventful death. 
Aiden being a member of DeadSec, whose mission on the Wikipedia says that their goal is to expose corruption in the common world. So he does what he thinks is morally correct by DeadSec's mission statement. And he posts a whole hard drive to Reddit, 4chan, Onion Black Market torrents, everywhere. Now, everyone from the mayor, to the police chief, XQC, even your mom is getting cancelled on Twitter because everyone knows everyone's dirty secrets. Damon calls us and he's really mad because he kidnapped her sister to hand over the hard drive. And now that it's within the public, I mean, it's useless now. He, he doesn't have all that information. So we track him down and he's located on a remote island on a lighthouse. And we put a bullet in between his eyes and the end. Oh, also, immediately after the credits play, we are face to face with Maurice, the gunman that we kidnapped at the start of the game. And Ubisoft gives us a choice to either kill him or let him walk to see if you're a good person and if you give people second chances. But as you can see, it took me less than a millisecond to make my decision. Thanks again for watching and I hope to see you on the next video. Okay, bye.